Hello there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be painting up our Primaris Chaplain and um, I thought I'd bring up my old Chaplain here. This is actually one of my absolute favoritest models ever 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 in the universe of uh of, of 40k um i just love the kind of the presence you know the the face everything's really really cool and um i wanted to bring him out uh because i want to talk a little bit about how i'm going to paint uh this guy now this one you'll see it might not show up as well on the camera but it's more of a chocolate brown um than a black i think the black at one point was a little tricky to paint the paint selections weren't uh, amazing for it um and i th thought that the brown offered a lot more a lot more life and character to the model as well. Now with this guy, uh, with the uh, Primaris Chaplain, we're actually going to have a whole bunch of, uh, of brown on his long coat here. So I'm actually going to go with black on the actual armor itself. And then um, he's got his hood and um, and his mask and his chest piece here all in, in the bone color. Now, um, I was a little saddened by the hood initially on this guy because I really like that color balance that you get with uh, the bone color and the uh, you know on, on the on the skull helmet and then you know, on the different um, uh, parchments and things like that uh, different scrolls but um, on this guy on the uh, Primaris Chaplain I've noticed here that uh, you know there's a lot of that bone color that was brought back and I'll, I'll do the skull on the knee uh, the face and 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 on the uh, on the rib cage here so uh, we'll still keep a lot of those elements uh, with us now I did build him in sub assemblies um, I left the legs uh, separate um, my challenge was going to be to get primer uh, just inside of here and color inside of here uh, when he was mounted all together because the 40 mil base is going to definitely get in the way uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take this off here now um, the glue that I use is, uh, is is a plastic weld kind of cement so I'm going to take uh, my uh, happy tape here. I'm just going to make sure I have a very uh, thin strip of tape. And so I just took a little piece of tape here. Uh, dog hair is not included. And I'm going to cut my tape horribly. And I'm just going to put my tape up here so that I still have that uh, plastic surface uh, to adhere to Okay, and then I'll do the same on the inside here as well uh, a little tricky to get in there So I'm going to use my uh, hobby knife here, and I'm just going to shield uh, parts of the inside uh, From the primer just so the glue has something to stick with so I'll throw a little bit more tape just in and around here to make sure that that join is uh, still bare plastic. Now I could always just scrape it off with the uh, with your hobby knife there, but um, I'll do a little bit of work in here just to make sure that that inner ring is kind of covered up and I don't uh, cover up anything out here. And then uh, I'll get them primed up in black. All right, so I've got these guys done up in the Army Painter kind of matte black, uh, but it was the end of the can and so it still ended up being a little bit shiny. Um, so I'm going to end up doing uh, what I do anyways and uh, just kind of doing a small layer of Abaddon black over top of all the armor bits. Now you can see here that I uh, took off the tape that I added in there and up here as well and uh, just wanted to make sure that I had a nice clean plastic surface to glue them together with the, the plastic weld stuff. So um, starting off with Abaddon black. Uh, we're just going to go over all the armor pieces, so not the coat at all, um, and uh, you know, the, just kind of the top part of the coat, to the uh, the hoodie part, if you will. Uh, and in the back, on the backpack, um, I'm going to leave a certain part out as well. So, just taking a thin layer and going over top of uh, all of the armor, uh, just a nice, uh, just kind of refinishing here, just to get that nice consistent shade back. Um, any of the parts that are going to be black. Now again, uh, this isn't to flood anything with detail, it's just to provide that other, uh, that nice kind of uh, normal finish that's going to match when we do the rest of our painting here. So on the legs, again, uh, I'll do like a, just a nice touch up here. Okay, uh, next up we're going to be working with Screaming Skull and we're going to go after all of the bone elements and I'm just doing this so I can work kind of from the inside out three-dimensionally and um, I'll start off with the inside here. Uh, we'll just do the inside of the coat 
and uh, you can see I've got it thinned down quite a bit here um, but uh, you know what this will this will layer up really nicely um, so what I'll do is I'll do uh, two or three coats of this and it's fast I mean people don't like to layer up their coats at all um, but uh, you know what if you just uh, if you just relax a sec you know it's 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 a pretty quick operation to get a nice kind of consistent uh, flow there and then I'll also do all of the bone elements and again make sure that you're paint is fairly thin uh, going on for this one uh, just because we really don't want to clog up the uh, the detail in there so we'll just go in here with that thin coat of the screaming skull and we'll do it on the face as well now you can see this is really light so it looks pretty sloppy going in here uh, but again just doing it uh, super light coats and uh, we'll do a couple of coats. The first one will give it that stick to the primer. And then the next, uh, the next round, will, it will stick to the, to the new paint. All right, and while we're working on our bone color here, our uh, Screaming Skull, uh, we'll also do our seals here. Well, I guess these wouldn't really be seals. These would be like scrolls or parchments. So we'll get those done as well, getting inside those little clasps there. And then we'll go down to here. Okay, we'll thin coat those up as well. Make sure that we're on the inside here with those little skulls. And oh yeah, does it ever look messy? <laughs> it's not that great. And then we'll do our scroll work here as well. Uh, just that little nameplate that's on there. All right, so I will continue on uh, applying uh, multiple light coats here to here and underneath. Uh, this guy's gonna be a little bit of work, but you can see very quickly that that second coat immediately starts covering up. Might even have a lot of brush on the, a uh, little paint, a lot of paint on the brush, so. And then finally, we have two last details here for the uh, Screaming Skull. Uh, one is going to be the Purity Seal uh, parchment here. Uh, and the other one is going to be the pages of the book. So I'll make sure that I get those all tidied up as well. So I'll make sure my coats are all nice and even uh, all the way through the model. Now, again, I just need another light coat on the inside here, and I think he's done there. Uh, the ribs as well on the armor. Uh, I'll just make sure that all the parchment here for the um, these kind of streamery, trailery seals here, and then just make sure the face is tidied up as well. Now we are going to be doing a highlight pass after we wash later, so uh, I'm not too concerned about the messy work right now, uh, but we will come back and uh, get working on our other base colors. All right, we can see that our uh, our bone color, our Screaming Skull, is all nice and tidied up. Um, it is difficult, it is more difficult painting on black than white. Um, it's just a little harder to see when you get a little bit of sheen on the black there, but uh, I think I got all the uh, bits and bobs here, which looks pretty good. Now, um, before I go on to uh, basing the other kind of colors, uh, I want to finish off our base of black, and I'm going to do that by uh, doing up a quick dry brush of Eschen Gray. Now, this is going to be a very light dry brush. Um, the idea behind it is, is that you cannot, uh, when you wash the black, you cannot low light the black. Uh, you can only highlight up, and that's why you'll see some with, you know, gray or, um, you know, white even, uh, you know, doing extreme highlights and all that to try and make it look kind of glossy. So, um, what we want to do is still get a little bit of depth of gradation in there. So what I'm going to do is take some Eschen Gray. I'm not going to thin it down. And uh, I'm just going to uh, throw it on um, a napkin or a tissue or a paper towel or whatever. And I'm going to get most of the paint off. And then I'm going to go and just dry brush here. I'm just going to go over and dry brush. And you'll see that it turns into kind of this charcoal gray uh, type of color. And I'm going to run a counter uh, to all the lines there just so that it picks up on the higher edges. So we'll get a little bit more of a broader highlight. Uh, clearly we won't be caking on the paint here. Uh, but what I want to do is start with this uh, and then we wash it, it'll tone it down quite a bit. So it'll be less black and more of this kind of um, uh, charcoal-y type color. Now with the, the chaplain himself here, not just his legs, uh, there's not going to be a whole lot 
uh, of black on the model because it's mostly going to be this this coat um, so I'm just going to very carefully dry brush around this here now we're going to be of course washing and redoing and all of that um, but what I want to do is make sure that we get that kind of charcoal look that gradiated uh, shading here on anything that is going to be armor based uh, so basically it's just going to be the arms and the backpack uh, on the actual chaplain proper the um, the pauldron here is going to be our our blue color okay so uh, anything that is armor uh, based uh, we're going to do with this eschen gray and that's just to kind of bring out the a little bit of life I guess to the to the black it's uh black can be really you know dark and uh, uh, invisible uh, your eye wants to kind of neglect it as much as possible all right looking solid and then just to kind of tidy things up just a little bit here as I'm going along uh, I'm just going to take this piece just in front of his face here and supporting all the tubes and I'm going to do this with a bad and black uh, just to kind of restore that color after that big sloppy mess of getting that bone color in. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to be doing lots of work with the metallics in here as well. So uh, just uh, kind of doing a little bit of a pre-tidy here. So with that black all tidied up and with the Eschen Gray on top giving us a little bit of shading, uh, we're now going to move on to our Retributor armor and we're going to be doing uh, the you know, kind of the foundational work or the base work of all of the um, uh, gold metallics uh, that are going to be on the model. And there's quite a few. Uh, we'll just work our way through. Uh, first things first, uh, we're going to do the skull here. All right. Nice and simple and easy. Uh, and then we'll do the this kind of centerpiece here on the on the fetish. Now this uh, again, if I mess up, I can always go over with a little bit more uh, screaming skull for sure. Uh, inside here, the little bit of a uh, I'll call it like a, a buckle or something like that, but it's just on the uh, um, the bottom of the torso there. And that little fetish there. We'll do these fetishes down here at the bottom. And if we go over, it's not a big deal. Uh, we're doing this on purpose and we're doing it this way specifically so that we can if we make up any mess ups or anything like that, we can come back and just go over it with another color. Uh, it's always easier to paint the smaller colors, uh, the smaller pieces um, first, and then as you paint the big ones, it'll work its way all the way through. All right, his iron halo, which is oddly enough not an iron color, uh, we'll do that in gold as well. At the bottom of each of his uh, scrolly purity seals here, we've got these weights, these symbols down at the bottom that hold the scrolls down, I suppose. Uh, those will be done in Retributor Armor. Uh, the corner protectors here, we'll get those done. We'll do the wing and skull on the side of his bolt pistol. And also the iconography up here on his shoulder pad. And again, if we're a little bit messy, don't stress out about it. Um, that's why we're doing these smaller details first. It's a lot easier to reach in with, uh, with the darker colors. Now there's a whole bunch of little skull decorations all over his armor. And so what I'm going to do with that is just make sure that I get those. And the buttons as well that we have here. Uh, 
And then finally, uh, these little clasps here, these brooches, these pins, whatever you want to call them. We'll make sure that we catch those. And we can always go in and top up later. Okay, so he's getting pretty glitzy here. Um, we got the gold all over the place now. There's uh, two things that I missed. Of course, I got all the small details, but the big ones uh, seem to pass me by, apparently. Um, the knee pads here I did in Retributor Armor, and the uh, corners of the pauldrons, the edges of the pauldrons, I did those as well. And you can see, again, uh, a little bit sloppy in spots, but we're going to be going black, back in with the black, black in with the back, um, back in with the black, and we should be looking pretty good that way. Now, uh, the next piece that we're going to work on is our uh, silvery color, and uh, we're going to use Lead Belcher as a base for that. Uh, we'll start initially with the uh, legs, and um, we're going to go after uh, these little bitsy bits uh, on the leg here. So just, uh, uh, you know, take a deep breath and go in. Now, if you mess this up or you get a little too sloppy, you can always come in with the black. Um, this one I'm going to try and do it as... Uh, neatly as I can here. Now it sticks out quite a bit, so we're, we're all right on that front, which is good. Um, and in addition to that, up at the top of that knee pad, we've got these little uh, flare outs here. So I'm just going to touch those flare outs up a little bit, just to give it a two tier, a, a different level of, of color. Uh, in here, there's a little kind of port, uh, which will get and then anything that's functional so any of these ribbed uh, mobile parts of the uh, legs I will do the same with the arms as well but any of these ribbed pieces up at the back now I'm not going to stress too much about these ones back here um, because uh, we'll have the, um, the the coat going over top, but uh, just going through and uh, doing it right. Uh, you never know what you'll see through the other side anyway. And that'll be the legs. Now moving to the chaplain proper, um, I'm going to start with the, the crozius here. And I'm just going to make sure that I get uh, the top and bottom pieces in the lead belcher, so it's nice and metallic there. All right, and then I'll do the uh, skull up top. We'll do that in that silvery color as well. Looks like a Terminator up there. Awesome. Big pile of hidden lore, apparently, that there were Terminators, and then the uh, chaplains were so impressed that they used them as their badge of office. All right. Awesome. Maybe it's just a stylized Necron head. Who knows? Um, moving on from that, uh, I'm going to do his Rosarius in the silver as well. Uh, they had it as uh, white on the box. I think I like the, the silver of it. I think it really grabs the attention. And uh, the white just seems a little out of place given the kind of palette that we've got here. All right. Next, we'll do the bolt pistol, the absolver. And I'm just going to go through here, get this done up on either side at the front. A little charm kicking off the front. Do the magazine holder portion of the bolt pistol. On the backpack, um, we're going to do a couple parts. Uh, the reactor cover here will do in the lead belcher. The ports on the bottom, the little vents here. We'll do the leads on the sides. And the exhaust vents up at the top, we'll do those in the lead belcher as well, leaving that cover there uh, in black. This protective plate up top, 
with that grate back there. We'll do that in the lead belcher and we'll grab that little bracket for the iron halo. All right, next we're gonna pick out some of the uh, small skull decorations to give a little bit of contrast. So I'll pick out the skull that's on the shoulder pad here that's surrounded by that funny enough iron halo. Uh, I will do the skull that is on the inside here that is set up the same way. So make sure that skull gets uh, tagged in. I'll do the skull inside of here. There's a little fetish in there. And then I'll do the little vial between all the, the gold in there. Moving on now to the smaller details. Um, in here we've got the chain that's right up at the front. So I'm going to do that as careful as I can, but uh, I'm doing it this way so that if I'm a little bit messy, I can just kind of fill in the larger areas. Uh, I'll do all of the belt buckles themselves, and this is very much going to follow that philosophy of it's okay to be a bit messy because, you know, they're really tiny. There is another buckle on the book right here. And on the little cover here as well at the bottom of the book. They're beautiful. And then finally, we'll be going after all of the tubing from his app breathing apparatus or just on his power armor or what have you. So we'll go after all that tubing and he's got a little bit on his face as well. We'll just tuck a little bit of paint in there like that to make that silvery. All right, I'll go hunt around. Some things will need a little bit of a second coat and that's fine. Uh, we can always come back to that. Uh, for example, here it's a little, just use another little touch up. Look, you can see some of the black showing through here. Um, so I'm just gonna go around, touch everything up and then uh, we'll get on to our other base colors. All right, so with all the metallics uh, finished up, uh, now I'm going to move on to, uh, well, kind of just tidying up this mess, basically. Um, we're going to start off with Dryad Bark, and we're going to do the um, the coat, basically. And I'm just going to work my way around. And you can see that you can just tuck in, and you can miss all the details, or you can kind of restore uh, the detail line. And all you have to do, really, is just kind of paint the larger surface uh, and go back in and just kind of paint around. So much easier to paint um, the larger details um, than it is the smaller ones. So I tend to do the smaller ones first and off we go, it looks great. So I'm going to work on uh, just this dryad bark on just the coat and his little cowl over top here. Okay, next up for our friend, uh, we're going to use a Steel Legion Drab here, and we're going to do uh, all the leathery bits. So um, basically anything that's not the coat that's kind of leathery. So uh, we'll start with things like the uh, holster. That'd be a nice easy one to kind of start off with. Okay, making sure that I don't get onto that seal, but I can always tidy up now if I've gone over with that uh, screaming skull color there. And next up, we'll do the belt. So just being careful to keep those buckles intact as to where they were before. And he's actually got two belts. So we'll do this belt. And again, very carefully, we're going to go in and around that buckle. Now, with the Steel Legion Drab being a base paint, it makes it very easy for us to kind of cover up any of the spots that we went over with the silver there. So really nice, so I'll uh, carry that around. And then we'll do the cover of the book. All right, and I'll tidy that up. 
We'll do his uh, little pouches at the back here. And we'll also do his braided handle of his crozius here. But I'll work my way through and we'll start with our red. All right, so the chaplain is looking nice and tidy now that we've got the browns all done. And um, all we have left to do now is the reds for the uh, bolt pistol and the purity seal. So uh, pretty easy going. Uh, we're just going to do, um, like I said, the uh, bolt pistol, the purity seal, and then we'll be off to washing time. Now, the nice part, of, nice part about the wash, of course, is that it's... Uh, once it's there, you see all the depth and detail, and then it just becomes kind of a topping up. So again, uh, getting through the uh, base coating stage is uh, awesome. I uh, I have to say it's uh, it's it's kind of hard looking at a model. It's very discouraging when you're in uh, paint by numbers mode, and uh, it doesn't look as nice as you want it to look, and you get a little discouraged. But uh, you know, once you get that wash on then it looks like you're actually turning it into something, which is always nice. All right, I'm just going to apply uh, a couple thin coats to this uh, bolt pistol. I'll make sure the purity seal is looking good at the end as well. And then we'll be back to do our wash. All right, so I just went through and did a, a little bit of tidying up. Um, I went after the uh, you know, the, the inside of the scrolls here, they got a little bit muddied over with the, uh, with the, with the gold. Um, I went in and changed out, uh, the shoulder pad here to match whatever your army is going to be. Uh, in this case, I use the, uh, alternate, um, uh, blue, that Thousand Suns blue, cause this is actually going to someone else here. Uh, and, um, yeah, I got the reds all done, tidied up all the, 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 the coat and all that. So just want to make sure that I've got a good handle on all the pieces that I want. And then uh, now we're going to use our wash. Now, this wash is a custom wash that I put together. It's a little weird. It's 25% null oil, 25% Agrax Earthshade, and then the last 50% is regular uh, floor wax, floor polish. Well, floor wax is, is the term that I'm using. Uh, and uh, you can get it anywhere, like Walmart or whatever. Uh, the type of floor wax doesn't really matter. It's more just the... Uh, the attributes of having it as a flow aid so um yeah it's uh it's it's pretty decent and uh you can see here well maybe you can see it's a little dark uh you can see that it covers the model and it just seeps into all the nooks and crannies and it gives this this really nice kind of shaded uh finish and because we did the uh eschen gray we can see that it's actually um you know gets covered up a little bit and goes back to a more truer kind of charcoal color so not a perfect black but definitely um definitely a little bit uh, uh more visible uh to the eye for sure so uh i'm going to go over our friend here make sure i got uh, uh loads of wash into all the nooks and crannies and um you want it not to pool up anywhere too much or if it doesn't go into one of the eyes or something like that um, but you'll see that it immediately starts bringing out all the the detail here so uh, the goal here is just to get good coverage, uh, let those shades set in nice, uh, you can see they're on the holster already, uh, but let all that shading set in really nicely, and uh, we'll let it dry probably for about 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour. Now that the wash is all finished up, we can see that there's lots of uh, detail brought out, and it really, uh, again, brings the model to life. Uh, it's it's beautiful to kind of see all the contrast that come in and the, the differentiation between the different colors, which is great. And of course, just looking at the depth that it provides to uh, all of our model here. So uh, really dig in the, uh, the effect of that wash clearly. And uh, now we're going to get started with rebuilding some of these colors, uh, but still restoring or, or, or leaving in place the depth of that wash. Uh, so the first thing we're going to start with is a little bit of dryad bark. Uh, again, just to restore some of the major highlights back to this uh, this coat here. So wherever there is kind of a major a highlight, a major raised area, uh, we'll go in here and we'll go in with the Dryad Bark and just restore a bunch of that color, uh, but still leaving um, a lot of that depth that's there as well. Now near the end or the, the bottom of this here, uh, it's, it's almost going to be like an edge highlight, 
where we take on you know a good chunk of that uh, of that uh, the edge there but then I'm just going to use some striations just some uh, vertical repeating lines uh, just to blend it in uh, a little bit here so we get that nice kind of fade uh, and when that dries it'll be it'll be really really nice so I'll continue on here uh, there's the uh, there's there's the coat itself and in addition to that we've also got the head uh, or the, the, the hoodie, the cowl there, if you will. Uh, and I'll go through and I'll make sure I just get the major highlights of that. So we can really see that that brown is nice and rich and deep. And we're going to actually um, amplify that a little bit. Uh, we're going to use Steel Legion Drab, uh, but because we want to keep the same tonal range, uh, I'm going to use it as uh, two points. Uh, number one is going to be the restoration of color uh, for all of the uh, leathery bits. So for example, the uh, holster here, uh, I'll just do an edge highlight around the outside. There we go. And then just kind of touch it up a little bit inside here. And the idea with this is to just leave that shading in there. Um, but like we overbrushed with the coat to restore the color, uh, we're just going to overbrush with the, um, with the leather pieces here. And all we're looking at doing is just restoring in uh, the major colors or the major highlights here of these, just to kind of bring them back, leaving those little depths and those little recesses in there uh, still still there, which is great. Um, with the belts, it uh, comes across really nicely uh, that we can do this. Uh, and it really just adds a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of visual interest. And it's something that your eye can pick up on from far, far away. So I'll go around and I'll do the pouches and all that. So after I've done the pouches, uh, I also want to do the book here as well. So I'm just going to go in here and pick out the majors of the book and we can be, um, you know, a little more relaxed about the whole thing. Uh, but I just want to pick up the major highlights of the book. So once we've got that, you know, foundational color done, the next thing that we can do is we can go after um, the coat itself and it's going to be a pretty simple process. Uh, I'm going to start with essentially an edge highlight uh, down each edge of the coat here to give us back that little bit of a uh, little bit of definition. Beautiful. Uh, I can actually do a little bit of an edge highlight along the bottom as well. And then what I'll do is I'll just go in and I'll just pick out the major highlights, uh, which we did before, only just kind of focusing more on those extreme edges. And at the bottom, I'm just going to striate or just these, you know, kind of decent lines and just kind of blend that in together to get that nice kind of look and feel to the, to the coat itself. All right. After the majors on this, uh, I'll do the uh, uh, edge highlight here uh, and just restore the color. But I want to keep that that three tones of depth there. I've done the pouches. Uh, I'll do the book, and um, I'm just going to go around touching everything up, make sure we got everything that we need, and I'll also make sure that I get the hood done in here. Just picking out kind of the major edges and just giving it that final highlight near the top. All right, so as I was going through, um, I'm still not 100% with the with the uh, coat here. Uh, I like the way the back turned out. The front, this one little bit here is a little bit tricky just because there's some, uh, you know, there's some motion in here that I'm not quite entirely happy with the way it turned out yet. But uh, uh, rest assured, I will pick away at it as I go. So in between cuts here, you'll probably uh, just imagine me fervently uh, going through and trying to tidy things up. Uh, so the next step, what we're going to do now is highlight all of the leathery bits uh, that we did with Steel Legion Drab, and we're going to highlight that with our uh, Carrick Stone. And um, this is just going to be a straight edge highlight, uh, just picking the uh, the edges of the uh, leathery bits out, uh, and um, you know, make sure your paint's you know fairly thin in this regard, uh, with regard to this one here. And uh, for the holster and all that, we're just going to go and just. Uh, touch the edges and do that edge highlight super light on the highlight there 
uh, will go across the top of the holster and all that as well. Uh, and for the belts, um, just being uh, a little careful here, uh, I'll make sure there's a nice fine point on your brush. And I'm just going to go in and just touch over the edges of the leather uh, belt. Uh, and you'll see once that dries, it'll give you a nice uh, kind of bright highlight, same tonal range. Uh, and it'll you know really pop that uh, leather out quite a bit, which will be quite nice. Uh, so uh, we'll apply that, of course, to the, uh, the pouches on the back, uh, just going across like so, across the top a little bit up there. And as that dries, it'll get a little bit darker. And then for the book itself, uh, just going at an angle here, and I'm just going to do uh, the edges of the books and uh, the straps. So any of the, the highlights that are kind of popping up, uh, we'll do that. So I'm going to be super careful on the bigger straps here. And then on these smaller pieces, I'll just do the edge. And I'll also go in and do just the little bit of the book down here to give it a little bit of pop. Now, if this gets a little too high uh, in terms of highlight, um, one of the things you can do, of course, is I can always go back in with the Steel Legion Drab and touch it up a bit, which is kind of my MO. I'm always okay with making small mistakes and then just highlighting it after. But you can see now that the belt's starting to dry. We're getting lots of, uh, lots of distinction there. So I'll go through and I'll finish off all the leathery bits and uh, just double check on things, sneak into the little nooks and crannies on the book there but I think, uh, I think that one looks pretty good. All right, our next major highlight is going to be uh, Screaming Skull, and we're going to do that on all the stuff that we did Screaming Skull on previously. So uh, any of the bone, uh, any of the um, uh, scroll work, anything like that. Uh, so I'm just gonna start with an edge highlight here over the uh, scroll work, okay? And I'll do it down here, just to where that ring kind of grabs it. And I'll just start up here. Now with that scroll work, it might not be uh, you know, super nice. I like kind of a rough uh, element to it. So you can see that it's got a curve to it. Uh, so I'm just gonna scratch in uh, in a couple of spots here, just to give it a bit of texture. I'm gonna scratch in uh, bits for the, the, the paper. And then when the writing goes on top, it'll kind of further for the bring out those characteristics. So um, I want to keep a little bit of that depth in there, clearly. Uh, I'll do in here, which is nice. Now for all the bone features, uh, I'm just going to do an overbrush. And uh, because we've got all that awesome color of depth in there, uh, I'm just going to go in and just very carefully, just touch on some of the highlights here, just to bring out that, that nice bone uh, set of features in there. And on the mask, I'll go in and I'll do uh, the major highlights. Now, again, not 100% sold on here. I might come in with a little bit more of that wash and just tidy it up a little bit. And uh, on, the, uh, on the scroll work here on the um, purity seals, I'm also going to just go in and pick up the, light, uh, the highlights here, just the majors. Uh, just so I've got that nice degrada uh, degradation, gradation of color. Or degradation down from high to low, I guess. And of course, because I'm like everybody else, I suffer from the out of sight, out of mind thing. So I'm just going to go in here now and uh, tidy up on the inside on all the major highlights for the inside of the coat. Now the next highlight color that we're going to do uh, to really make you know one part of the model pop, obviously, is our Mephiston Red. And uh, just like we've been doing with all the other ones, we're going to restore uh, that color over top, uh, leaving all the, uh, you know, that shading in, intact, which is great. And, um, you know, really makes the model uh, pop. Red's that awesome color that just works with pretty much everything. Um, I got no problems using red, clearly, uh, if you look at the channel. Um, but um, it's just got so much uh, emotional weight to it. Uh, and it's really, really cool. It's a very aggressive color, great for, you know, weapons, things like that. Uh, that's why corn is such an amazing uh, set of models to paint. So I'm just doing an overbrush here, uh, making sure that I get, um, you know, all these uh, bits of rib detail. And if you 
uh, don't have a lot of paint on your brush, you can even get away with just over brushing like that. So uh, basically just the same as a, uh, a dry brush, only you've got just a little bit more paint on your, on your brush there. Sweet, looking good. Yeah, so really starting to come together now. Loving it. Okay, so you know what? That, uh, that skull mask was really starting to get on my nerves a little bit here. Um, I think it needs to be a little bit more uh, rich. So I'm going in now with uh, some extra wash. So same wash I used previously. I'm gonna try and deepen up this color in here. Make it a little bit more recognizable as a skull. Grab a bit more. And you know, every time you do a paint, uh, you know, a painting scheme or something like that, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you can just keep iterating over and over and over again. Like, granted, there are there are cases where you will uh, run into problems. I'm just darkening this up a bit here uh, as well. Uh, there, are, there are cases where you're going to run into problems for sure, uh, where, you know, you might have too thick of paint or something like that. But, I mean, the truth is you can just keep picking away as you go. And it's... Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty rewarding and um, it, it d definitely combats that kind of painting uh, discouragement where you think, oh no, it's not going to look good. And you can just keep iterating it closer and closer to uh, perfect. Uh, you'll never be perfect. I'll never be perfect. Uh, even Golden Demon Painters will never be perfect. They'll be amazing. Um, but you just keep iterating through and you find what essentially works, works for you. Now I think it looks a little bit better, a little bit stronger anyway. And I'll uh, carry on with the red here. Okay, we'll be taking uh, a little bit of Wild Rider Red that's pretty thinned out here. And we'll just keep doing some multiple coats on top of our red uh, just to bring it out, uh, give it a little bit more uh, life and highlight here. Just taking our time, going super easy on here. Just going on the edges of our Mephiston Red. Okay, next up we'll jump into our Metallics and we're going to highlight all of the silver elements with our uh, Rune Fang Steel. And um, we're going to be pretty gentle with this uh, in terms of application. We can see that there's still lots of kind of brightness in there. So this is just going to be to add a little bit of extra to our uh, painting here. So uh, going to highlight all the metallic pieces in here uh, just to give them that nice hit where it picks up the light. Uh, so anything that's kind of sticking out will get a little bit of an overbrush. Uh, you can go with an edge highlight, but I mean, uh, you know, metallics tend to be a little more um, a little more distributed in their highlight as opposed to like uh, if something was painted a certain color. So I'll just do a little bit of an overbrush here. And on things like the chains, uh, I'll just make sure there's not a lot of paint on your brush here. Uh, I'll do an overbrush of that and inside of the fetishes here as well. Uh, the belt buckle, the inside skulls here. Uh, you know, if you really want, you can do the uh, piping here on the chest. And um, make sure I get some more paint here. And also the crozius here. Uh, I'm just going to just touch at the bottom, uh, go a little bit washed over kind of the middle just to give it that nice gradation on either sides. Uh, work that around. Uh, obviously the Rosarius here, we can just very carefully uh, touch up. Now there's like next to no paint on this brush. Uh, I just want to make sure that I don't fill in any details. Uh, on the skull, that's pretty easy to kind of pop. Uh, again, you just pull down and then go across the face and then go over all the major uh, highlights that way as well. Top of the skull, we'll give a little touch. At the back on the power plant, uh, we'll just give it a little bit of a circular motion in here just to give it a, a nice kind of pearlized uh, rounded edge. Uh, we'll go over the edges of the vents and the leads here. Uh, we're just bringing out just some of the highlights that are there. Uh, at the top here, this venting, we're going to do that. The holder for the iron halo bracket, I guess. Uh, the skull there. And just in here as well. 
And of course the tricky belt. Looks good though. Now for anything that we did with the uh, retributor armor, so any of the gold in here, uh, we're going to apply a layer of fulgurite copper. Um, probably my favorite gold highlight. Um, and you'll see I use it in most of my videos whenever there's gold. And the thing I like about it is that instead of kind of fading from a gold to like a, a bright silver, fulgurite copper's got just that right kind of in between of all of uh, those two colors. And you can see just how bright it is. So even if the detail is fairly muted, as I, I kind of approach the fetish and just kind of around here, even if it's a smaller detail, it really picks up the light, which is which is fantastic. And I'll just kind of do it over brush just in here. And you see it just really pulls, pulls that eye inward. It's fantastic. Yeah, I really like it. So I'm going to go after all the fetishes, uh, obviously. Anything that was kind of that gold trim previously, uh, the little holders for the, the scroll work, um, doing a little bit of an edge over the shoulder pads. Uh, very easy to do. Now I've seen, as it, you'll see as I go, there's a couple spots where I've gone over a bit, and I'm just going to do that final touch-up, funny enough, with the black at the very end, uh, just to make sure that I've got all the things that I need to get done, uh, done. Uh, and then I'll just kind of touch it up with the black. It's kind of a weird way to finish it, uh, but there you go. There's the collar on the crozius here for the skull. Uh, there is the halo itself, which we can really brighten up quite a bit. The corners of the book. Uh, we'll make sure we tap those in with the highlight. Yeah, look how bright that is, it looks great. Uh, and then finally, Probably my favorite detail on the whole model is those buttons, those little skull buttons at the bottom here. So let's just go do this. Okay, now for the final trick of this show here, uh, I'm going to take a bat in black and anything that was charcoal-y before uh, I want that charcoal to be uh, almost an edge highlight. So if you look at your uh, feet here, your legs and your feet, I'm going to go over very much like I was going over a major highlight. Uh, I'm going to go with the black. Now what that's going to do is it's going to leave me with a bit of a black edge, the charcoaliness there that's there as well. And um, it's like a subtractive edged highlight. Uh, but I'm just going to go into kind of all the depths and then pull out towards towards that charcoal -y edge. All right. Now I would let it dry and see what you think or how you feel. Now, if you've screwed up at all and you've gone over just a little too much, you can always go back in and just paint that edge back in there and it'll blend in with all of our other uh, shifts and changes and all of that. And for the chaplain himself, I'm just gonna go in and just restore just a little bit of that uh, dark color in here. And again, anytime that I've gone over, I'm just going to just walk that black back to that edge. And because Abaddon Black is this really nice, thick, not thick, like heavy pigment uh, base color, you can really just get in there and touch it in and it'll do lots of covering up. Pretty brilliant actually. And for a black power armored model, there's not a lot of black exposed on the model. Um, so it's a nice balance of all the different colors. It's not uh, too much of that big monotone black. So it really kind of stands out. Awesome. Okay, so for the painting side of things, we're essentially complete. Uh, what I like to do to get a little bit more detail in there is I'm going to use our, uh, our Micron pens here. Uh, these are available at any art store pretty much and they are worth their weight in gold. Uh, the size I'm using is the 005. It is the 0.2 millimeter uh, and it's actually pretty solid. Um, I really dig the effect that it gives. 
And all I'm going to do now is essentially black line the model. So uh, I still got them in two parts, obviously, because I want to be able to, um, uh, to, to base them up rather nicely there. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick out uh, a couple of things. Uh, basically, any time that there is two colors that meet, so for example, this chain here, I'm just going to go in and just add a little bit of black line. Now, it's very subtle, uh, but it's a nice kind of cell shading look to it. So anytime there's two colors that meet, uh, whether it's inside this, uh, this little fetishy thing here, okay, just providing a little backdrop for that, or if we're talking things like the uh, bolt pistol, uh, when we have the two colors that meet right here. So I'll just go around like this. And it just adds a little bit of depth from kind of a little bit of a distance. And it looks really, really solid. Uh, in addition to that, I will go over uh, all of the little uh, bits where the textures are split. So if I want to add a little bit extra highlight to the buttons here, or the buttonholes, I guess, I can go in and do that. Nice, and it just draws that that out. And of course, any of the textury type stuffs in here, uh, stuffs, uh, the texture type things, thingamadoos, whatchamahoosits, uh, in the book, for example, uh, we can just bring out that texture in the book as well. So anywhere that there's two textures that kind of meet, or there's a little bit of extra low light, uh, anywhere that we have um, uh, two colors meeting, and anything I just want to kind of doodle up. Now, uh, I've got videos on how to do the purity seals themselves, uh, but I use my micron pen to do that as well. So, so I'll grind through this here and uh, I'll get the base done as well uh, before we come back. All right, with the black lining all done, our Primaris Chaplain is complete. I uh, love the way he turned out. Actually, he's uh, it's it's a really strong, characterful unit. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt that he's you know rocking a skull mask, but he's got you know lots of kind of iconography draping off of him, lots of silvers and golds to really stand out against those darker colors. I like the fact that the challenge for paint, for painting a black model is to have as little black as possible, uh, and um, you know that really comes off nicely here. You've got the Beautiful contrast between those chocolatey browns and the, the black armor. Um, you got all the bright golds and silvers kind of showing it off. You even got the shock of red on the Absolver bolt pistol. So uh, super pleased with the way he turned out. Um, even leading him from behind, it's going to be nice to look down and see that iron halo, um, you know, and that bright gold with the metallics at the back here, the, the metallics coming off the Crozius Arcanum. Very nice, uh, and you know, uh, you know, contrasted against the lighter colored base, it really makes the model pop. So, pretty pleased with the way he turned out. I'm really liking it. So, uh, he'll be on the battlefield soon, taking on the uh, uh, whoever seems to be on the other side of the table with vim and vigor and anger and uh, you know, screaming pro profanities in the emperor's name. Uh, looking forward to it. Should be pretty, pretty darn awesome. So. That is it. Uh, if you like the video, uh, obviously hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. It, uh, you'll get tons of videos just like this. We do lots of gaming and um, just general model play with uh, with the Warhammer stuff. Um, so really just a big pile of stuff. So uh, feel free to subscribe and um, there's a little notification button. There's a little bell there once you subscribe and then you'll get definitely notifications on all your apps and all of that. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I had a ton of fun painting this guy. I hope you enjoy painting yours and we'll catch you in the next video.